Hello, dear family. I hope you can hear me all right. Um, well, God bless you, everyone who's come to see this video. I feel that the time is so urgent. I'm going to quickly tell people the gospel that will give them everlasting life. It's the only gospel that will give you everlasting life. When you die, um, yet shall you live because you have believed on the Lord Jesus. And that is, this is the gospel, that Jesus Christ left his glorious kingdom above and he put on the flesh of a normal human body, a normal human man, and came into the world uh, to save, save sinners. Um, he went to the cross. He was beaten so badly that he was unrecognisable. He was crucified and then they buried him in a tomb and God raised him from the dead on the third day and he was seen alive by by hundreds uh, possibly thousands um, who gave witness in the book of Acts um, there was there was many that saw him I'm not too sure about the amount of people but the main point I'm trying to get to is if you're unsaved and haven't laid hold of your salvation please do it ASAP today let today be your acceptable day of salvation because first of all you're not promised tomorrow and we are on the cusp of the Lord Jesus coming and taking out of this world every born-again believer so please believe on him all it takes is for you to believe that Jesus Christ was crucified for all your sins past present and future that he was buried and that God raised him from the third day you call upon him and you are saved because whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved no matter how unworthy you might feel no matter how evil the things you've done in your life you think that w will separate you from God no there's nothing so evil um, that God will not forgive everything anything for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved so I'll leave that. I pray that you go to Jesus if you are unsaved, um, because time is of the essence. Uh, it could even be today. Dear Father, I just devote this video to you. I pray, Lord, that you will guide me. I pray that a square won't appear on the screen to distract me. I pray that your, you will give me you, you will speak through me what you want me to um, show my beloved family. And everyone here on on this video in the name of Jesus I pray amen and I pray also dear father to add to that that it will be a blessing such a blessing and such an encouragement to everyone who hears this message in Jesus mighty name amen right uh, I, I've been a Christian now 28 years born again believer but I carried on living a life of sin in the world. Um, I've explained it in my testimony video. If you look, go to look at that. I lived a life of sex, drugs and rock and roll as a born again believer. Um, but because I was a true uh, born again believer, um, Jesus brought me back in, uh, into fellowship with him and with the Father even though I had done some terrible things as a believer, um, he loved me and he bought me with his own blood and there's nothing that can uh, take me out of his hand, nor you if you've believed. If you've believed truly on the Lord Jesus' sacrifice for your sins on the cross, you've called upon him, you are bought with his blood and, and you are predestinated, you are sanctified and there is nothing that can snatch you out of his hand. So I went astray, even as a born again believer, I got saved first in London and, and then I went astray. Uh, and I, I, like I say, I, I was into drugs. Uh, I committed sexual immorality. Um, I was even a drug dealer at once, at one time. Uh, this just shows you the mercy of God. I'm not bragging about these things. I'm ashamed of them, if anything. Well, I'm not ashamed because the Lord has cleansed me of that. But I just want to make it 
show you just how merciful God is. Um, I mean, yes, I was a drug dealer um, in Spain. I, I, well, for my own use, I used to make crack cocaine. I mean, this is just shows you how how great the mercy of God is and how sure um, your salvation is. That even when you do things like that and go astray in such a terrible way, he's still got his hand on you and he's living in you and you cannot lose your salvation. And if anybody wants to, um, if anybody doubts that they, you know, that they have to work to maintain the salvation or, or doubts that Jesus is, um, able to save them without them having to do do something then i don't mind you commenting um and i will show you the scriptures that prove once you are born again um there's nothing you can do to lose your salvation and um, there's no good work that can keep you saved um i'll deal as gently as i can but when i get um, these nasty comments which um, i have had i've had some despicable comments fire personal attacks on me um, and I've removed a couple of them so I don't want everybody else to see them either um, so I just want to show you this, this is my first Bible New Living Translation what's left of it because <laughs> I carried it everywhere I mean, I mean look at it it's just falling to bits it's, it's, <laughs> it's a hard it really but I kept it because it's my first my first ever Bible that I really read um, so I just want to show you that first of all but next of all uh, I am going to be praying for you all in a minute but I want to show you this this is awesome um, first of all um, when you pray remember that God is more than capable of answering your prayer now listen um, Um, in Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, it says, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? So that's the first one. Now let me go to the next one. Showing you that nothing is too difficult for the Lord of hosts. Nothing. No, oh, that's not one. Hold on. Absolutely nothing too difficult for the Lord. No, that's not shouldn't be in there. There's nothing in there. Isaiah. Oh, no, it's not that. There is some in Isaiah that I show. Just a second, chaps. I've got them all bookmarked. Right. Another one to show you that there's nothing too hard for the Lord. In Jeremiah chapter 32, first of all, in verse 17, um, Jeremiah is speaking, and he's speaking to the Lord. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth, and by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. There's one more. And in the same chapter, 32 of Jeremiah, verse 27, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Next. Let's have a look. Uh, there's nothing in that one. That's something else I want to come back to. Uh, neither is that. There's something else I'm coming back to in a minute. Uh, Jesus speaking in the... In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 27. With men, it is impossible. For whatever is impossible from a man's perspective um, might be impossible, but not with God. For all, with God, all things are possible. So there's your other one. Um, then we go to the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Um, oh, yeah, so, so that's it. So you've got, and I'm sure there's more quotes um, 
in the Bible showing you that there's nothing too difficult for the Lord. Just a second, when I get some water, dear family. I appreciate you all. And this channel, I'm not doing it for um, uh, subs and, and likes and all that. No, um, I'm doing it because we're in the final moments and I want people to get on board uh, with salvation before it's too late. I'll just remind you, if you're unsaved, all it takes for you to be saved is to believe that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross for all your sins. He was buried in a tomb, but God raised him from the dead on the third day by believing that truly and calling upon him. That is the only two requirements to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Believe and call upon him. So, um... I want, I want, I want you to, uh, right, I don't, I think I'll just, I'll, hold on a minute, yes, I'll start with this, in the Gospel of John, uh, 14, I'll read, I'll read from verse 11, of chapter 14 in John, my dear brethren, uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So he's saying that we will do the same works as him, if we have faith and do not doubt. Uh, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So when we pray, we go to the Father and we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus or through the Lord Jesus. And we believe, first of all, that he's listening. And secondly, that he will answer faith. You believe and then you leave it with God and wait patiently for the Lord to answer. Um, now, hopefully I've got this underlined to save time. Yes, I have. Um, and just another one to show you that, that nothing too hard for the Lord. I'm going to read from Ephesians 3. Uh, and I'm going to read from verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. Now, this is the verse that I want you to pay attention to. In Ephesians 3, chapter 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. So he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So you can think of the, the most difficult thing that God could do. Well, he's saying he can do exceeding above that, whatever we can imagine. So I wanted to encourage you with that. And, um, and uh, uh, oh no, where was the other one? Just a second. Mm. Uh, just a second, my brethren. Thank you all for your comments. All your comments. I'll tell you some of you guys. I read those comments of you blessing me and encouraging me. And that's what's keeping me going. What looking at your comments, comments from Lee, comments from you, all of you, and you all encourage me. So I'm going to try 
to make videos as often as I can, considering the, the moment and time that we are in. Um, again, uh, with prayer, Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. So, um, don't believe the devil's lies, saying, "Why would God answer your prayers? Your, you know, look at the sin that you're practicing." Or no, no. Go to him first. If you feel like you, you've committed some sin, say, "Lord, I confess my sin to you." I pray that you will forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And he is faithful and just, and he will do it. He'll forgive you. And then go to him in prayer. And don't uh, limit God with, with our... I'm, talk, I'm preaching to myself that we should not limit God with our prayers. Um, it's like we, we can pray for the lost. I'm just going to pray for the lost right now. Dear Father in heaven, I... I give you glory, I give you praise, Lord. And I, I just pray, I hope you all join me in this. Father God, for all the lost, all the unsaved, who don't know you, Lord, I pray your spirit to be poured out upon all of them and that you will send them um, your messengers, Lord. Every born-again believer shall be... Um, endued with power of the Holy Ghost and urged to share the gospel with um, the unsaved and the lost. And I pray, Lord, that you'll, uh, a big harvest shall happen, a harvest where many people shall come uh, into that knowledge of salvation and lay hold of their salvation, the lost, the unsaved. Lord, I pray you draw them all to you through the Lord Jesus Christ and save them in your precious name Jesus I pray I believe amen so I hope you prayed that prayer for me for the lost uh, my my dear family this video won't be as long as the last <clears throat> but I I just wanted to um, point that to that fact that nothing's too hard for God and that he can do exceedingly above all that we ask or think Remember that when you go to him in prayer. Um, once, once I had a, um, well, I'll, I won't, I'll spare you the details, but uh, I was attacked, and um, I was uh, pushed down some stairs, and I fractured my thigh bone, and I didn't even go to the doctors. I just laid my hands on it, believing, um, and God healed it. it. It didn't happen straight away, but. Uh, it happened quick, <laughs> and it, the, it, it, I fractured my leg, I, I, I know I fractured a bone, uh, I know I didn't go to the doctor to have an x-ray, but I knew that there was some serious damage to the bone, well it was all healed, uh, let me think of some other times where uh, I had hepatitis C, and um, at the time that I had it, they were testing with these drugs to heal it, now there is a cure, but um, uh, I went to a church when I f found out that I had hepatitis and my skin was going yellow around my eyes and my hands were going yellow um, I went down to a church called Ebenezer Baptist Church on Columbus Ravine in Scarborough and I went in there and um, I spoke to a nice man called Bill well he took another el elder of the church and they both laid their hands on me and um, I was healed and I went back to the liver specialist because hepatitis C is an infection of the liver. And she took um, a, another blood sample to see how the uh, uh, it, the illness was progressing, advancing. Um, I was told that it was getting bad and I needed to get treated straight away. And um, two weeks later, I got a phone call. Please come in. I've got some good news for you. So I went into the uh, liver specialist clinic. And she said, um, uh, it's very strange. I can't find any trace at all of hepatitis C in your bloodstream. Uh, 
can we take another sample please so we took another sample nothing there so god god oh thank you lord for answering that prayer um because i was starting to get wor really worried especially when i found out that um 50 percent of men die from hepatitis c before they reach the age of 50 um, well that was the statistics back then i don't know if they're changing but it was back then because i was read it by the doctor and i was told there was no cure for it um, and they were working on a cure and um, the liver specialist said i'm going to send you up to the hospital three times a week for a series of injections um, with something called interferon i think it was called um, but it wasn't a uh, hundred percent accurate cure uh, but fortunately I was cured before I had to go through all that ordeal I hate needles um, I told Lee that I hate needles I think I posted it on a um, comment on video but I've always hated needles and and um, I'm glad because I, I was brought up around people injecting everywhere and um, it never once um, I was never once drawn to do that. I hated it. I thought, how can these people do this? They don't even know what they're injecting. So I smoked heroin on the foil. Um, it's God forgave me. That, how many years now, Lord, am I without heroin? It must be about five years. And uh, a bit less than that off um, crack cocaine as well. So three of, the, three of those two things. Free of alcohol. Well, actually, no. Um... And that's one thing I want to point out. Um, people go to Alcoholics Anonymous, where I went, and they said to me that you've got an illness and you'll you'll always be an alcoholic and you must never never touch tr touch another drink again. This is what they told me. Um, but the Lord, he, he healed me of my alcoholism, and now I can drink just a little glass of red wine and I don't want any more. In fact, I had a bottle, I wish I still had it, um, but I've used the last of it. I had it, a bottle of red wine for six weeks, um, and I, I just took a little glass now and then, and then I did communion with it online. Um, so, so, yeah, so I, I, I can drink now, um, just like a normal person. So they were wrong at Alcoholics Anonymous. And I, I, to be honest, I, I'd... Uh, try to defer people from going there and rather uh, go straight to God and go to some believers and have them pray over you rather than going to these AA meetings and no I do not recommend them at all or narcotics and anonymous again they tell you you've got an illness and uh, it's something you're going to have all your life but it's, that's not true because God is capable of doing all things and when you go to the doctors you've got some something a lump or something and they say to you i'm sorry but um th this this lump or th this illness that you've got um there is no cure for for it um don't receive that because with god all things are possible when they say um, you've got cancer um if they said that to me i would i would i would say to the doctor well i don't receive that um i rebuke that cancer and I would tell the doctor that all things are possible with my God. So, um, yeah, just remember that when you're going through any illness, any sickness, that God is not limited. Um, we limit him. We limit him with our lack of faith. We limit him with our doubt. Um, we limit him with not believing. Um, I, I am aware that there are some things, for some reason... That the, the Lord doesn't cure. It's like me. I've got something cut up. Just a second. I need some water. I've got a dry mouth. I have um, an illness called Raynard's Syndrome. And um, apparently there's no cure for it. But again, I believe there's a cure with God. But for some reason, I've had um, I've been prayed for quite a few times for this Raynard Syndrome. And it's... I've still got it, so um, you know. Even Paul had a, um, a messenger of Satan, a thorn in the flesh. Um, 
Jesus, oh, that's another thing. And Jesus said to him, um, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. So when we're weak, his power is made made perfect. It's made manifest in us when we go to him. So, uh, so yeah, nothing is too hard for the Lord. That's the main message. And to pray, to pray, uh, knowing that he, he's listening, knowing that he will answer. And uh, if somebody has got a prayer request, uh, leave it in the comment section because I know all you lovely people who subscribe to my channel, I know you will pray for that person, um, and I will. Um, I did. I did start a list of people praying for, but I've sacked that off in future. When somebody asks me for prayer, I'm just going to pray on the spot for that pr for that person, believing that they will be healed, whatever it is. Believing. Um, because there's so much going through my mind at the moment that I, um, I find it difficult to keep up the daily prayers and re remember everyone. Uh, so I'm, I'm completely, I'm not perfect um, in, the, in this body, the way it performs and in my mind. But um, uh, spiritually, I am positioned with Christ in the heavens, an heir of God and co-heir with Christ. Positionally, I, I, I am uh, I, I'm, I'm saved, sealed, sanctified. Uh, so I'm, I'm not perfect in my performance, but I'm justified, uh, just as if I'd never sinned. I got that off Tim Henderson. Justified, an heir of God, co-heir with Christ. So yes, I'm not perfect in my performance. I confess that um, there's still some things I battle against. Um, I've been an addict all my life from the age of 15 and that is a hard thing to break. And uh, I, I'm, I'm still on some medication, um, medication for uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And also I'm still on some medication um, that, 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 that I took originally to, to get me off the uh, heroin uh, and I was on this real high dose of it and I'm down to um, 1.2 milligrams of something called buprenorphine it's, it's not much but um, I find it really hard to reduce off that who knows I might be on it for the rest of my life but um, as far as salvation is concerned it, that's not going to affect my salvation Yes, um, God, you know, God would like us all to be off these things, but He also has put them there as well. I believe put doctors and and medics there and uh, pharmaceutical companies to create certain drugs to help people, um, definitely, uh, but not all, because there's good people and there's bad people in every walk of life within. The, the hospitals within the pharmaceutical companies so it's good and it's bad um, and there's some medicines uh, I think are very bad for people some of these antidepressants um, I've tried them all because I, that's one thing I suffer from if if you if you would be so nice to pray for me dear family uh, about my depression um, I'd really really greatly appreciate it because um, I do have bouts of depression and that's when I won't do a video uh, because I, when I get like that sometimes I get so down that I just have to lie on my bed and I'll just I'll just say Holy Spirit please pray for me and then I'll just lie down because I just can't I can't handle it I just get so overwhelmed with uh, this depression but um, again, uh, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And I've prayed about it, um, and it's got better. But if you would pray for me, I would greatly appreciate it. And if anybody's got any prayer requests, leave them in the comment section, or, or just put your 
you don't have to put too much details just and you know just put say please we pray for my illness you don't have to go into much detail uh, god knows all the detail and i will look at that comment and pray and, and, and i hope everyone else has a look as well um I'll pin that comment to the top of the video that you would pray for that person. There's one woman. Uh, I don't. I can't remember her name because I lost her. But um, oh, Joe, Joe T. Uh, will you just join me in prayer for Joe T? Uh, she, she's a woman. Um, she has to take painkillers to get out of bed on the morning, so she's suffering quite bad. So just join me in this prayer. Uh, for her, for Joe, uh, please, dear brethren, dear Father, we come together in your name, Jesus Christ, and we bring Joe, this poor lady, who's suffering so much pain, Lord, and addicted to painkillers, yet she's saved. Lord, we beseech you with your great mercy. You would pour out so much power of the Holy Ghost within her, and... Um, Take away that pain completely in the name of Jesus. Get right to the source of it, Lord, and uh, help her. At the very least, Lord, you will ease the pain and bless that woman and uh, really help her, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And every day that it won't get worse, it will get better in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, family, if you prayed with me. Um, she, she actually uh, told me in a comment that, um, or oh, it was an email, I can't remember. She said, um, I know when people are praying for me. And she said, you know, um, and it makes a difference. You know, prayer does make a difference. Sometimes people will say, well, all we can do is pray. <laughs> That's the number one best thing we can do. So, uh if there's anything else, Lord, you would like me to show, show to them. It was mostly about um, asking you shall receive. Nothing is too hard for God. Um, pray, pray believing. Um, let's just see. Lord, is there anything else you would like me to tell them? Um, I'm just going to read quickly. I know it's been a bit long, but I'll just I'll just uh, um, read from Ephesians chapter one, uh, verse two. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Um, just going to skip into verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So he's showing he's predestinated us. In verse 13, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So um, God does not go back on his promises. And just again, um, for anybody who thinks that we're saved by our works, um, People, uh, please listen. Uh, Ephesians 2, uh, 8 and 9 and 10. For, for by grace are we saved. Through faith and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which god have ordained that we should walk in them so any good work um that could include um reading your bible uh, praying um fellowshipping um showing an act of mercy 
um, showing an act of kindness that, that can include those good works can include all things bringing others to Christ um, but we're not saved by these works nor kept saved by them we're saved the moment we believe on Jesus sacrifice for our sins on the cross and called upon him we were sealed hallelujah hallelujah so I just pray for everybody who's watching dear father God there's some here Lord that have a need I just pray you will meet their needs Lord Jesus just guide this prayer there are some who are suffering illness and pain you heal them completely in the name of Jesus. You strengthen everybody's faith who's, believe, who's watching this to receive an answer to this prayer. Well, even by my faith, they shall be answered. And anybody who's feeling like they can't go on, restore them, Lord. Restore them and, and pour out your grace upon them, Lord, so that they can continue running the race and fighting the good fight. I pray everybody who watches this video shall be blessed and you'll make a noticeable difference in the name, the precious name of the Lord Jesus. You bless the hearers and watchers of this, Lord, and meet their needs in the name of Jesus and pour out your spirit and glorify your, yourself, your spirit within every believer in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to get off because I'm making this a bit long, but I love you all. I love your comments. My gosh. Well, I want to tell you, they bless me so much. Encourage me. Um, encourage me to keep making videos because I didn't, I didn't realize that um, um, people were actually being blessed by them um, as much as, as they are. So I'm really good. Um, thankful that for them comments and grateful because they encourage me to do more so uh, yeah I'm imperfect but we're all a work in progress and if any man says to you I have stopped sinning and you know they're lying because in 1 John it says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves so of course we have sin whether it be in, in just thoughts or, or in word or in actual deeds, um, we all sin and we all fall short of God's glory. But we are justified, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. He's coming soon, um, very soon, suddenly. In fact, oh yeah, by the way, a Christian lady came up to me and she said, um, I've got one word to say to you that the Lord gave me. And I said, what's that, Janet? Janet, her name is, she's a lovely old lady, and uh, she said, suddenly, the Lord gave me that word today, suddenly, um, so this was just a little while ago, but um, I believe that God did give her that word, suddenly, suddenly he's going to come and snatch us out of this world, just in time, and I believe as he does, um, something from above is going to come down possibly the fallen angels that have fallen out of paradise and fallen in that they've got access to the second first heaven and the earth I, I don't know too much but um, sometimes I lose my train of thought, thought forgive me um, but I just love you all I'm going to get off anyway but God bless you. Um, keep fighting the good fight. Remember that there's nothing too hard for God. He loves you with an everlasting love. Everlasting. Everlasting life you have. If you have believed on Jesus Christ. And very soon we are going to be so joyful. We are going to be happy. We are going to be so happy. So happy. And we're going to have tears of joy coming out down our eyes. Tears of joy and happiness instead of tears of sadness. So God bless you all. Bye for now. I love you loads. Bye bye.